Mr. Speaker, in September, uh, my statement putting people's first shaping our future, I set out a programme of actions to ensure that we have a pattern of provision which delivers a high quality education for all children. These actions included the completion of a viability audit to identify schools evidencing stress, as well as the, the initiation of area planning work to determine the future pattern of provision in each area. At this point, it is estimated that it will be the final quarter of the current financial year before the first plans are formally adopted. In my statement last September, I made it clear that area plans will eventually be used to identify the priorities for capital investment going forward. I also said that I would need assurances that any project approved for capital investment was consistent with the overall provision needed in an area. At that time, I indicated that the former investment delivery plan would be set aside. However, I did state that these projects and others could come forward again if, when tested, they remained a priority within the proposed future provision. Mr. Speaker, my capital budget over the remaining three years of the budget period is £104 million this year, £108 million next year, stepping up to £184 million in 2014-15. With the processes for planning and approving new build projects often taking being long and protracted, it is clear to me that the decisions are now needed to influence capital expenditure in 2013 and 2015. The needs for capital investment far exceed the funding available. As much as I would like to be in a position to fund everything that needs doing now, I must work with the budget available to me. This means difficult decisions on the future investment plans. Concordia, to ensure the most effective use of the capital budget, I am implementing a four-stand approach to new capital investment. I will deal with each of these in turn. The first round of my capital investment plans for the coming period involves advancing a number of new build projects. I am today announcing investment of £133 million in 18 capital projects, including five special school projects. The intention is that the new school build projects will be potentially on the site in the final quarter of the current financial year or early in 2013-14 financial year. In identifying these projects for investment this time, I wanted to be assured that they have been future-proof and remain a priority for investment. I therefore instructed my officials to draw up an interim process to identify suitable projects. This is a pragmatic approach to ensuring effective use of the capital budget. I want to stress today that today's announcement in no way implies that other projects will not be considered at a later stage. As a result of the process that I have set in place, the new capital schools projects I am announcing for investment today are Collister First Year, Belfast, to the value of £11.9 million, St Clair's Convent and St Coleman's Abbey Primary School in Newry, £6 million, St Joseph's Convent Primary School in Newry, £5.8 million, Dromore Central Primary School, £11.4 million, Eglinton Primary School, £2.5 million, Tannockmore Primary School, Lurgan, £6 million, Abrington Controlled Primary School, Derry, £4.5 million. Foyle College, Derry, £19.6 million. St Teresa's Primary School, Lurgan, £3 million. Victoria Park Primary School, Belfast, £4.9 million. Anneskillen Primary School, £5.7 million. St Mary's Primary School, Banbridge, £5.1 million. Bunstall Ben Madigan, Belfast, £2.5 million. Cancolia, I want to make it clear that approval of these projects is subject to each complying with any terms and conditions set down by my department and securing the necessary approvals and clearances needed. Mr Speaker, the second strand of this capital investment strategy involves establishing a number of projects to be advanced through the planning and approval processes. I have already referred to the time lag between deciding to proceed with a project and actually commencing construction. As a consequence, there is a need to ensure there is a program of potential pro projects being advanced through the various stages. Therefore, as with the capital projects announced today, a process has been established to identify a number of projects for which funding will be provided uh, for planning. It is my intention to announce in the autumn the list of projects that can be taken forward. Thank you, I want to turn now to the third strand of this capital announcement. In my statement in September, I made it clear that my reduced capital budget over the coming years does not allow me to consider a new bill in every case, and that we need to do more with the existing estate. 
I also made it clear that we have too many schools for the population we serve and that steps need to be taken to reshape the estate to better meet the needs of our society. In response to these points, I am announcing the establishment of a new school enhancement programme. This programme will, will make available funding of up to four million for any individual project which is aimed at refurbishing or extending school, existing schools. Priority will be given to projects aimed at supporting amalgamation or rationalisation. Initially up to 20 million will be available for this programme in 2013-14, with the option of increasing this in 2014-15 depending on the number and quality of proposals. For those schools not announced at this time, however, the new enhancement programme offers an opportunity to add and improve existing facilities. This may prove a more accessible and pragmatic option. Details of this programme will be released in the autumn together with the first call for potential projects. And can call you Tommy Aguirre, Clay and Ishlesh and Kahari, Snina and Snina Jeremy, Jane Fogra, Shamajar La Infrastructure Capital. Mr Speaker, I want now to turn to the fourth and final strand of my announcement on capital investment. This covers investment in special schools. Since taking on the role of education, Minister, I have visited schools in each and every sector of the education provision. The common factor in every sector has been the clear need for considerable investment in infrastructure. I have been particularly seized of the need to ensure we support the most vulnerable in our system. No one visiting our special schools could remain unmoved by the needs of the children attending these facilities. I would dearly like to be able to advance every deserving case immediately. However, with the limits of the funding available to me, I am determined that we make progress with a number of cases at this time. I am therefore today announcing that the process for building three special schools will be advanced. These will be Belmont House Special School Derry at the value of 7.4 million, Ross Moore Special School Lemavati, 6.4 million, Castle Tower Balamina, 21.8 million. In addition, an option appraisal has been carried out over recent months looking at the most effective use of the former Balmoral High School facility, which will be vacated by St Colmans over the summer months. While further work will be required on finalising the business case, I can announce that the preferred option identified is that of St George Resource Centre would be the long-term tenant of this facility. I would also remind members that our release special school in Oma will be taken forward as part of the Lissanelli Campus project. Lissanelli Campus is a unique project and an opportunity to develop a state-of-the-art innovative shared education campus to serve the needs of almost 4,000 children and young people in the Oma area. Delivering on this commitment in the new programme for government, and I will prioritise taking forward this exciting opportunity. Mr Speaker, this represents an investment in special schools of over 44 million. I would stress, as I did for the new builds announcement earlier, that I am approving work to advance the business cases and design work necessary for these projects. I would, however, I would emphasise that these will be priority projects for funding going forward. Mr Speaker, I want to make it clear this morning that my department's strategy for capital investment in the coming years will be shaped by area planning. I have authorised the Education and Library Boards to begin consultation on the post-primary area plans on the 5th of July 2012. The extended consultation will run from the, until the 26th of October 2012, a full 16 weeks. This will give ample time for the public to read and reflect on the proposals before responding. The boards will be writing to schools to notify them of the launch date before they finish, which for most of them is the end of the week. The capital investment proposals announced today are consistent with and are grounded in an area plan approach. This is a pragmatic initiative to ensure that capital funding available can be used most effectively. Concordia, this is a good news story, and children and young people have been central in the considerations. A modern education environment is essential to raising standards and reshaping education provision. This is also a good news for the local construction industry and the economy, representing investment of almost 173 million and will help create and secure jobs in a sector that has been badly affected in recent years. I have therefore tasked my officials to ensure that the projects I have announced today are moved forward with urgency. I realise that for every school they have announced today as progressing, at this time there are as many which need investment. The budget settlement the Executive was presented with has limited the funding I have available and has prevented me from progressing all the schemes I would like to have done so. More focal score, I can call you. In conclusion, Mr Speaker, I have taken clear and decisive action to ensure that we 
effectively use the capital available in the next number of years and ensure we can maximise the benefits for children across the North.